Pinch hitter. Pinch hitter for the Burns Bulldogs. And tell me that name. Jay Siegel. Jay Siegel will pinch hit for Paul McNeely in that number nine spot. Right-handed hitter up there for the first time today. Takes a ball from Dylan Harris to start things here in the fifth inning. And now this 1-0 pitch is fouled out of play. Cheryl trying to hang on here, get that first victory of the season. They lead it one to nothing here. Game moving along pretty good. We're one nothing ball game, top of the fifth. As I say that, we'll have 19 walks this inning, but <laughs> Leroy is here. Leroy Montgomery. Josh got a pretty picture of him. Don't forget, folks. After each game, two ones a strike. Our uh, our waiter, uh, he he walks around taking pictures during these games. So we also have photos. <laughs> we also have photos during these games and some video that we post on Facebook uh, the day after. So tomorrow afternoon, uh, line drive to center field. To yeah, center pretty field well hit. Back on the run. <laughs> try, actually, backpedaling, and Clay Fuller hauls it in for the first out. But that was uh, maybe the hardest hit ball in the game. Maybe by either team. Yes, it was. And it's a pinch hitter, Siegel, that flies out to center field for the first out. Well, we've had two doubles today that hadn't didn't even make it to the fence. So. Right. <laughs> two stand-up doubles that didn't make it to the fence. And that was the hardest hit ball, and he's out. So now back to the top of the order, Tyler Richard, lefty, left-hander, one for two today. A lead-off single in the first inning, but was stranded at third. Scott Harrell says, let's give a big shout-out today to Hoover Quinn. He is watching online today for the first time, first game he's seen in two years, uh, getting to watch his grandson, Hunter Jackson, play. And he says he wants to thank his caregiver, Belle Quinn, his daughter, because she's got it on she's, for she, him. She fixed it up for How him. How about that? Oh, good for him. And, uh, and, Wish uh, him the best. I want to thank you, for, you guys for tuning in. If you've missed it so far, just now tune in, Hoover. Uh, Hunter has been the star of this ball game so far, David. I tell you what, he's uh, <laughs> picked off two runners, and he's uh, and he's got the uh, only run to give Cheryl their first first and only lead of the 2012 season. This pitch is upstairs. Now the count goes three and one to the leadoff hitter, Tyler Richard, the leadoff hitter in the order. He's actually the second hitter of the inning. There is one out. Mr. Henry ain't giving anything above mid thigh, is he? No, <laughs> his his uh, give me is. It's left, wider than it is taller, right, isn't it? Left to right, not up and down. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. I mean, it's got to be below the belt or it's not a strike. Three to one is fouled out of play out into the parking lot. Well, you know, if he's if Hunter Jackson's the grandson of Hoover Quinn, that explains why he's good enough to play. As a freshman. As a freshman. Yes, you know, sir. Baseball in the jeans there. Does a real good job back there for any catcher. That's what we, less, yeah. Much less a ninth grader. 3-2 pitch on the way. is fouled back into the screen. The count stays full. 3-2. and two. Cherville leads it here. one to nothing on the Hauser Drug Mr. Sparky scoreboard. The only run of this game coming on the uh, RBI double from Hunter Jackson. Listening at home, the Ironman decked out in their white jerseys with pinstripes. Here's one lifted into shallow right center field. Second base. Oh, second base went the wrong way. Right fielder in, and it's going to drop right in between everybody. And now the play is going to be at second. And sliding into second is Richard safe with a double. It's the only way you can score it. Just a clean double. He just hit it. High pop up towards center field, David. The second baseman, McNeely, turned over the other shoulder and went the other way. He was lost from the get-go. He went towards right field. Right fielder came in. Actually ended up making the play. Yeah, it's just a tough break for Cheryl. We'll just hit where they ain't. Well, in the in Fuller out in center field, you know, that's technically probably his ball. But when it first goes up, he's got to be looking at the second baseman thinking he's going to get that. And then he saw the second baseman go to right, right. field, and Fuller had to bust up to get in here. And then the breeze blowing kind of left to right now didn't help any either. No. Total confusion with the pop-up. Bun attempt is going to pull it back for ball one. Dustin Green, yet to make contact and put it in play today. A strikeout victim in the first. He drew a walk in the third. Number two hitter in this lineup, the shortstop for Burns. And sorry about the camera work on the last play. When the ball went up, I, th I was thinking out. Pop-up uh, didn't move it over until it was too late, so I don't know if you guys quite saw exactly uh, the Ironman running around the outfield looking for the ball. So you're taking blame for that. I'll take it. <laughs> 
<laughs> this one. Oh, he outside, called that a strike. Outside edge at the knees called strike. Dustin Green, one and one. He really got it. This ain't a post 100 game day because there'll be a few more yelling in his ear right now. <laughs> He's missed a couple. I, I usually don't talk about the umpires like that because I've done my own share of umpire. And, and, uh, but you don't miss any, do you? No, I've never missed okay. one. Just making sure. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go out there if I was going to miss one, would I? <laughs> That's right. 1-1 <laughs> one, one pitch, foul back into now, the net. Now, there's been some bangers at first that I didn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll tell the truth. Call the it, hardest call one. Call it quick and look calm. Yeah, call it quick, turn around, walk away like you knew what happened. But the uh, the check swing in the dirt earlier with the Harris, that's to me, that's one of the toughest plays to sure call because the ball's in the dirt. You don't know what hit what. The bat hit the ball, the bat hit the dirt, the ball hit the dirt, and everything else. And you got to make that quick decision. Usually I go ahead and ask the first base umpire for help on those. This pitch upstairs evens the count two and two to green. And also those short hops to first base mm -hmm. with the run and run, and those short hops to first are always hard to. Tough to call as well. Two balls, two strikes. One out here in the Burns fifth inning. Cherville up one to nothing. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Green goes down for the second time today on strikes, and that's a big strikeout for Dylan Harris, second out of the inning. Richard still the runner down at second base. It's going to be up to Brandon Alexander now, the catcher, who has walked in both of his plate appearances today. Six strikeout of the day. Six Ks for Mr. Harris. Much better control on the mound today for uh, for Harris and the Ironman. That's that's another thing that you know he came in in relief at North Gaston. And he, did well. he did good. He did good. Well down there. First pitch upstairs, a ball here to Alexander. Alexander is the number three hitter in this lineup. So a critical point here in this game because a base hit here by Alexander in all likelihood would tie this thing up. You're right. Now, the biggest things that we've seen so far this year, the Ironman's weaknesses have been finding the strike zone and hitting the ball. But today, Harris doing a great job finding the strike zone. Ironman only got one run, but right now that's good to go. Because they lead one to nothing. Here's the pitch to the plate, and that's on the inside corner for a strike. I'm sure Coach Heaven will take a victory no matter how many runs his team oh, scores no, right. at this point. Yeah, this team needs terrible. Ironman definitely need a win. Build a little confidence. See Lee Kaiser out there. Landry McNeely. Did you hear that? Danny Aker. Maybe the first time in over 40 years the Ironman have started 0-5. Doing some fact checking on that. Here's a throw down to second base. Runners back in there. That's a Richard Walker type question. <laughs> if Scoop was still here, he would know that off the top of his head. Tell you who the losses were to. <laughs> yeah, he could. One ball, one strike, two down in the inning. Runner at second gets his lead. The pitch swung on and missed up around the letters. And Alexander could not catch up with it now. He's in the hole one and two. Harris looking for the... Big strike out here, get out of this inning and leave that tie and run stranded down at second base. Terrible one nothing lead in jeopardy here in the fifth. Number three hitter for the Burns. Bulldogs up to bat today. He's walked twice. This one popped up on the right side. Over near the Burns dugout. Foul territory. First baseman giving chase. Must still nice catch, the catch. It? Nice catch over there at first. He almost overran it. <laughs> but then actually did overrun it a little bit, but reaches back. And makes a snag. No runs, a hit, no errors. One runner left down at second base. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Your score on the Hauser Drug Mr. Sparky scoreboard remains Cherville 1 and Burns nothing. You're watching and listening live to Ironman Baseball presented by r &M Motors and Pawn Shop of Cherville. Live on WhatsUpShopper.com, WCSL 1590 AM and Big O Country, WOHS 1390 in Shelby. 
When the septic tank backs up, Dennis Willis Septic Service in Cherryville is the name to remember. Dennis Willis services, repairs, and installs all types of septic tanks. They have pump-out tanks, too. Call Dennis Willis for septic tank service at 704-435-2326. Again, that's 704-435-2326 for professional, fair, and honest work from a name you've trusted for years. Dennis Willis Septic Tank Service of Cherryville. Again, that's 704-435-2326. Get your prescriptions to go from Medical Center Pharmacy in Cherryville. Yes, delivery is now available. Look for the Medical Center delivery van in your area. Just call 704-435-3263 for your prescriptions to go. You can even order online at mcpcherryville.com. Check out that new and improved website. And the grill is now under new management. Come on in for your favorite sandwiches. That's at the Medical Center Pharmacy, East Academy Street in Cherryville. On the go for you. Winder. Go ahead, David. All right, back at Fraley Field, Cherville still looking for that elusive first victory of the season. And, you know, we're just sitting here in the press box, Kevin, talking a little bit about the Cherville Ironman team and how young they are and everything. And they are young, but I'll tell you what, they got a bright combination here mm-hmm. of, of Dylan Harris on the mound and Hunter Jackson behind the plate. They could take them a long way well, in yeah, the future. And the good thing about it is that. They're young, but the young players are playing. They are. So there's not they like are. the it's not like you got set the the seven and, and five freshmen and sophomores sitting down on the bench not doing anything. They're actually on the field, contributing to the team. So that's going to make a world of difference in the next few years, and especially post 100. Hunter Jackson, who so far in this game has the deciding RBI, drove in Zach McNeely back in the second inning with the only run of this game, and he leads off and he takes a ball here from Frankie Harrell. As we terrible bats in the bottom half, inning number five. And this pitch inside corner for a strike. Evens account one and one. Ironman lead one to nothing, top five. Bottom five. Harrell with the breaking pitch in there for a strike. Good looking pitch from Frank Harrell. He's pitched a nice game himself. Yes, he has. Only, Only give up one, one hit and one run. The, pro, the the bad news for Harrow is it's the, it's the batter he hit, Zach McNeely, in the right. second inning that came back to haunt him. This curveball stays upstairs. That's why you can't defend a walk. Two two. Walk the guy, right. next thing you know, he's scoring. You only give up one hit, and he, he'd be losing pitcher, too. <laughs> <laughs> so. Here's the pitch to the plate. Foul back over our heads. Harrow's throwing a lot more fastballs than he was earlier in the game. Probably a lot due to fatigue. He's into the fifth inning, and, and uh, I can tell you from experience, sitting down there throwing all those sidearm pitches, curveball after breaking ball after breaking ball, you get a little tired, and later on in the, in the game, you just want to find the strike zone, so you end up throwing a lot more straight balls. A curveball outside. outside. Whoa! <laughs> outside corner. I mean, I know I'm sitting three feet to the right of the plate, but what do you think, Ed? Strike. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll tell you what. He's been I know what he has. He's called it for both teams. He has. And you know what? Usually if you're a coach, and you, and you see no argument. Yeah. If you're a coach, if the guy calls the same thing all day, you're pretty much satisfied with it. And and that's what he's done. It's and a big big strike zone on the corners. And the coaches don't mind it, but the, but the batters they do. do. <laughs> the batters. Because they don't get up there that often. No, yeah. They don't, you, they don't you bat it, but three, three four times, times a game. Two, three, four times a game. And, and to even – to for Hunter to even put the bat on the ball, he would almost had to step on the plate on that one, that curveball over right. the outside. I mean, I agree with you. It's off the plate, but the one thing, and and, and it's you know, especially with your pitcher and catcher, mm-hmm. when they come to the plate, they know what they're calling yeah. all day. Austin Moss Teller, first baseman, nothing and two the count, hitting from the left-handed side. Nice swings and misses. It's in the dirt, and the catcher will have to complete the throw to first, and he does so. Two to three to put the, to uh, complete the strikeout. Fourth consecutive strikeout now for Frankie Harrell of the Burns Bulldogs. Right-hand sidearm thrower on the mound. Been in control most of the game, Kevin. You're right. He's throwing a good game. Only one hit. Seven Ks now. Seven strikeouts four in now. A row. And four in a row. He's starting to feel it. 
Moss Teller, the freshman, the latest victim, and now Josh, excuse me, I keep wanting to say Josh McSwain, but it's John <laughs> McSwain. Josh was 10 years ago almost. Yep. The first four, <coughs> first four batters in this chair lineup, I just figured it up, are sophomores. Whew. First four batters are sophomores, then a senior, junior, freshman, freshman, senior today. So, like I said, when I played, <laughs> when I played, the freshman couldn't even try out, and most sophomores couldn't, couldn't try out. No, you couldn't you even know? walk. You couldn't even walk on the field. You could have hit 995 home runs in JV, <laughs> and it wouldn't matter. Here's the pitch. The 0-2 is fouled out of play, so McSwain stays alive up there. Well, let me ask you this: Do you think that the reason you're seeing so many young players playing is is have have kids stop playing baseball? You think there's even in charitable? That'll probably have that something to do with it. Is that you don't have as in the past? Once you get up to that age, um, this pitch misses outside. I hadn't said that much today. No, <laughs> not at all. It's got to be in the other <laughs> batter's box for Henry to I mean, call it outside. When did you ball. think you'd see a, a charitable baseball team with three seniors on it? And next year we're probably going to say two. Travel There's ball. Juniors on this. Travel team. ball. Travel ball is taking a lot out that uh, Judy and Danny's passed down here. Travel ball is taking a lot of people away from from high school. So, but I just you know just uh, just you know I, I'm just very surprised that three seniors on the team and, and one junior because what happened to that age group? Where did they all where's go? The, where's all the juniors at? Right. Yeah, um, it's so. And at some point, you got to think, like you're saying, they lost eight last year. That means there were juniors on the team that set the bench or didn't make the team because of that. So next year, you don't want to yep. come back out. There's a swing and a miss by McSwain. And how about that? Frankie Harrell seems to be getting stronger. He strikes out the side here in inning number five, his eighth K of the game, his fifth consecutive strikeout of charitable hitters. No runs, no hits, no errors. We've played five complete. We head to the sixth inning. Your score on the Hauser Drug Mr. Sparky scoreboard remains the same. Cherubal 1 burns nothing. Thanks for 